Welcome to our third virtual Adobe Summit and thank you for joining us. Each year, Adobe Summit brings together global leaders across industries to learn, connect, and be inspired by the latest innovations in digital customer engagement. What's new this year is that we've enabled the entire Summit digital experience using our own technology, Adobe Experience Cloud. And we're able to personalize the experience based on your industry and interests. It's an incredibly exciting time to come together as all businesses must redefine how we engage with customers and deliver digital experiences at unprecedented scale. Since we came together at this time last year, the global health crisis has remained a major concern. While it's been challenging for so many, it is incredible to see the pioneering work being done by scientists and medical professionals around the world. I also want to acknowledge the horrific violence and humanitarian crisis unfolding in Ukraine. It is heartbreaking. We've been inspired by the strength and resilience of Ukrainians and the global community coming together to support them. And through it all, we've witnessed the power of digital to connect us. In the past two years, we've seen a profound global shift in work, learning, and entertainment. As consumers, we love the convenience of online shopping and drove a record number of billion dollar e-commerce sales days last year, putting us on track to surpass one trillion in e-commerce sales this year in the US alone. Telehealth visits are now the norm rather than the exception. Students are more accustomed to learning at home. People are finding shared connection and community in immersive games and virtual concert experiences. We're collaborating in real time with colleagues within and outside our organizations on a daily basis. And this is playing out in industry after industry. Increasingly, we're using the digital world to do things that we once only did in the physical world. And the ongoing conversation on the metaverse reflects the fact that the distinction between what people do in the physical and virtual world is blurring. This enormous shift to digital was a catalyst for people to reimagine what the future might look like from reflecting on life choices and reinventing themselves with new jobs and new businesses, to exploring new ways to monetize their content and creativity and fueling the explosive growth of what is being referred to as the creator economy, to rekindling interest in the web as an immersive and engaging medium for all aspects of our lives, and driving unprecedented interest and investment in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and Web 3.0 technologies. Today, the digital economy is bigger than ever as digital technologies are empowering individuals, transforming businesses, and connecting communities as never before. The sheer magnitude and impact of these changes across all industries is absolutely massive because it's not only changed people's habits and expectations, it's changed how we work as hybrid and remote work have become the norm. And companies shifted operations to better meet customer needs. This goes far beyond just selling online and touches on how companies contribute to society, build and sustain trust, and earn customer loyalty. The topics of digital transformation and changing customer expectations are dominating business conversations. We're all grappling with what it means for our businesses and how we capitalize on the enormous opportunity of the digital economy. For us, the call to action is to make the digital economy personal. It's what we've done at Adobe, from how we engage with our employees to how we serve customers and collaborate with partners. At the heart of every great experience is an emotional connection, and great content plays a big part in making that happen. The experiences need to be real-time to deliver the right message to the right customer in the right context and through the right vehicle. Customer journeys need to be seamless across numerous touch points and across whatever channels your customers are using to connect with your brand. For end customers, that result is a satisfying experience. And for businesses, it is the imperative to action this data in milliseconds to be responsive to your customers. You'll hear more from Anil on what it takes to personalize the digital economy at unprecedented scale. As a product person at heart, it gives me great pride that Adobe pioneered the digital marketing category over a decade ago. Throughout that time, we've continuously innovated and invested in organic and inorganic growth to deliver more value to customers. 
We were the first to focus on the needs of the CMO and the Chief Digital Officer. And we've now expanded that to serve the needs of the CIO and actually every business owner. Adobe Experience Cloud is a comprehensive, unified set of applications to optimize all aspects of the customer journey. At its core and the focus of our ongoing innovation is Adobe Experience Platform with billions of customer profiles at the center. It harnesses trillions of transactions to deliver personalized customer journeys at every touch point from acquisition to monetization. As digital business becomes more critical to business growth, Adobe's mission to change the world through digital experiences is proving to be more relevant than ever before. On the eve of our 40th anniversary later this year, I'm incredibly proud of the impact our technologies have had on every aspect of society, from desktop publishing and imaging to electronic documents, video and gaming, and of course, digital marketing and e-commerce. It's humbling to think that the digital world runs on Adobe's tools and platforms. Our core set of values focusing on people, purpose, and community has guided Adobe's evolution and growth over the past four decades and inspires our over 25,000 employees around the world on having more impact and inventing the future. Core to our purpose are three areas where we are uniquely positioned and motivated to make a difference. Adobe for all, creativity for all, and technology to transform. Adobe for All encapsulates our belief that everyone deserves equal treatment and opportunity, and that by building a diverse and inclusive culture at Adobe, we can represent and celebrate different perspectives for our customers and communities. Creativity for All underscores our belief that everyone is creative and has the right to share their story. Technology to Transform is about the awesome responsibility that we need to take to help ensure that our technology is being used to do good. While we've all made significant strides in embracing the tremendous opportunities of the digital economy and appreciate your being on this journey through an all virtual world with us, we do look forward to a day when we can come back together again in person. Thank you for participating in Adobe Summit. Thank you to our customers for their trust that they place in us and for the partners for being on this journey and sharing your insights. I'll now pass it to Anil Chakravarti, president of Adobe's digital experience business. Anil. Thank you, Shanti. Hello, everyone. I want to add my thanks for joining us from around the world as part of the Adobe community. And I want to echo Shantanu's sentiments. Our thoughts remain with all those affected by the crisis in Ukraine. As Shantanu discussed, the shift to digital we have all experienced over the past two years has been unprecedented. We've seen this firsthand with our own digital business at Adobe. And I've heard it over and over from customers around the world. The digital economy is what is driving growth for businesses around the world today. But the question remains, how do brands unlock this massive opportunity? In a phrase, it's all about the experience. The ability to create and deliver digital experiences that are relevant to the individual, consistent across every interaction, that provide strong value, and importantly, honor customer preferences and respect their privacy. Now, personalization in and of itself is not new. Each of you across this broad community, you're well aware of the importance of delivering a relevant experience to every customer through the right channel. But today and going forward, success will be defined by a new standard, and that is the ability to achieve personalization at scale. That means delivering those relevant experiences in real time for every customer on every channel, both online and offline, including the immersive experiences that continue to grow in prominence, and in a way that respects their privacy and delivers value to them each time. This is what builds mutual trust. And that trust has never been more important, particularly in a world where first party data will be the lifeblood for all marketers. Now, if all this sounds too good to be true, I can promise you it is not. In fact, several of your peers are doing all of this today. And we are honored and proud to be working with them to enable it through the Adobe Experience Cloud. The Experience Cloud is a comprehensive set of integrated AI-enabled applications and services for data insights and audiences, 
content and commerce, customer journeys, and marketing workflows used today by three in four Fortune 100 companies and powered by the Adobe Experience platform, which is the cloud native platform on which all of our applications are built and integrated. We have seen strong growth in Adobe Experience platform since we launched it in 2019, including a 300% increase in customers during 2021. This explosive growth is the result of our teams working closely with you and with a vast and valued partner and developer ecosystem. Over the past year, we've been hard at work developing innovations across this and our entire portfolio to support your efforts. And I'm excited to share a few of these innovations with you today. First though, let's talk a little bit more about how personalization should feel from a customer's perspective, whether it's an individual or a business. Fast, easy, safe, familiar, sometimes even entertaining, and ultimately satisfying. It might as well be magic. In fact, that's how your customers should feel. Now behind the scenes, of course, there's a bit more to it. A real-time customer data platform, content velocity, and customer journeys. And it's just not enough to simply have them. They must be integrated, synchronized, and result in experiences that are timely, relevant, and connected. The place to begin is data. Real-time, actionable, experience data. This is the foundation to collect, organize, govern, and surface business-changing insights that inform our decisions. It's crucial to do this in a comprehensive fashion across your enterprise and to meet the current day expectations of your customers in an instant. The Adobe Real-Time Customer Data Platform is how we help you deliver on this for your business. It's an enterprise-grade CDP built on the Adobe Experience Platform that unifies data into a single profile to drive experiences in the moment. We're helping brands around the world and across industries do this to the tune of more than 24 trillion audience segment evaluations per day as of December of last year. Today, I'm thrilled to announce the integration of Adobe Real-Time CDP with Adobe Target to help you analyze customer insights and action them as part of on-site and in-app personalization, all in the blink of an eye. We also know that fast and flexible data collection is the first mile in the journey to rapid experiences. And with Adobe Real-Time CDP connections, I'm excited to share that we are now delivering instantaneous performance with the Adobe Experience Platform. The Edge Network's distributed servers with approximately 165 billion calls per day, again, as of the end of 2021. Finally, B2B brands can use Adobe Real-Time CDP B2B edition to leverage Adobe Sensei, our AI engine, and predict lead and account scoring to determine the likelihood of a prospect or account proceeding to purchase. Eight in 10 in our community are taking advantage of Adobe Sensei in combination with the Experience Cloud today. And we plan to continue to push the AI envelope for all of you in this and many other areas. You'll have the opportunity to learn much more about everything you see here throughout Summit. Okay, with a strong data foundation in place, content remains paramount. Personalization simply does not happen without content velocity across creation, access, and delivery. Adobe Creative Cloud is the destination where your design and creative colleagues spend their days developing the amazing content that you put into action. And today, we're making the workflow from idea to content to experience far easier. I'm excited to announce the integration of Adobe Workfront, our application that serves as the backbone for operational and campaign excellence with Creative Cloud Enterprise and Adobe Experience Manager Assets, our digital asset management powerhouse. Now, creative and marketing teams can power end-to-end -end content creation delivery consistently through connected teams and at speed and scale. With your content engine now humming, the ability to personalize and deliver these awesome creations becomes top of mind. And that's where the Adobe Experience Manager, our best-in-class content management application, comes in. Directly within the Experience Manager, whether it's in a headless or a headful deployment, marketers can now leverage the power of Adobe Sensei to quickly create and repurpose content with smart tagging, 
cropping, and imaging. That means you can deliver unique experiences to all customer segments and increase engagement, conversion, and order value in less time. We've also deepened the Experience Manager integration with Adobe Analytics so that you now have insight into how your brand's specific content is performing, helping you optimize campaigns in real time and deliver the best content to every customer. These are a few of the many advances that we're bringing to market to support your efforts in content personalization. You will see several more in action over the course of the next two days. With comprehensive data flowing in real time, along with content velocity, personalization at scale then comes down to the seamless journey you provide every customer with every interaction. In a few words, that journey must be well orchestrated, connected, consistent, and of course, shoppable. Last year at Summit, we introduced the Adobe Journey Optimizer, an application built natively on Adobe Experience Platform. It is tailor-made for marketers to manage the customer journey from broad general campaigns to in-the-moment, real-time mobile engagements. Today, I'm excited to announce advances in Journey Optimizer that enable you to personalize omni-channel journeys for customers at the right time via email, SMS, mobile push, and mobile in-app experiences with website connectivity coming later in the year. And brands can also optimize customer experiences with expanded message experimentation capabilities, both within and across channels. Additionally, with the new audience portal, Journey Optimizer now allows marketers to dynamically build, enrich, refine, and activate the right audiences to target within their journeys and campaigns. Finally, we now have enhanced decisioning in Journey Optimizer with new AI and machine learning algorithm to optimize the next best experience for a customer at any point in their journey based on your goals and desired outcomes. For B2B brands, Adobe Marketo Engage is the go-to for automation in lead and account-based marketing. Today, we're delivering new integrated intelligence and engagement capabilities to help ensure that you're progressing only the right prospects as part of your campaigns. And with Dynamic Chat, we're helping you accelerate buyer journeys by recommending the best chat content to guide personalized customer conversations as part of your larger omni-channel strategy. Of course, the end result of a successful journey is often a completed transaction through digital commerce. And we've made significant advances in Adobe Commerce to help B2C and B2B companies keep pace with market demands. For example, with new intelligent commerce capabilities, merchants can now leverage AI to suggest relevant products in recommendations or search based on shopper behavior, product features, visual elements, and popular trends, helping improve conversion and retention. Again, I've just touched the surface of innovations that we are delivering in these critical areas. Our teams will be covering the details on several more in sessions across Summit. Okay, while we've covered quite a lot of ground, I want to remind you that there is much more to share over the course of Summit to help you deliver personalization at scale and win in the digital economy. I encourage you to check out the Innovation Super Sessions, as well as breakouts and training workshops where our experts and your peers at leading global brands will go much deeper into the areas that I've discussed and several more. For now, it's time to hear from a brand that has not only successfully upped its digital game in the past few years, but has also played an important role in helping combat the pandemic. Walgreens Boots Alliance is reimagining local healthcare and well being for all. And digital is front and center in their efforts. So let me turn it back to Shantanu for a great conversation with Rosalind Brewer, Chief Executive Officer of WBA. And before we go to them, let's take a closer look at the innovations that I shared moments ago.
I'm truly delighted to welcome Ross Brewer, CEO of Walgreens Boots Alliance to Adobe Summit. Ross has had an incredible and illustrious career leading brands like Starbucks and Walmart through periods of tremendous transformation and growth. Over the last year, she has led WBA as it has played a mission critical role in providing healthcare, vaccination, testing, pharmacy and retail to millions of people throughout the pandemic. Roz, first, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. You're the CEO of one of the most iconic companies, WBA. Can you maybe share a little bit uh, with our audience uh, your passion and background that led you to this role? Sure. So, you know, first of all, in making this decision to leave Starbucks Coffee Company and come to the healthcare concentration, there were a few things that led me in this direction. Uh, first and foremost, you know, there is retail involved in this. And part of retail is just thinking very, very strongly about the consumer. And right now, the challenge in front of us is absolutely about the consumerization of healthcare. And so many of the things that happened in retail eight to 10 years ago around digital loyalty, transparency in the analytics is exactly what we're approaching in healthcare in order to get cost, healthcare costs down and to get health outcomes improved. And it's quite similar. Uh, but I think what really drew me to it was timing. And being in the middle of a pandemic, knowing that there was so much happening around vaccine understanding, vaccine execution, the equity around distributing vaccines, and the education that this country needed so that they could feel confident in taking care of themselves was really the energy I had to make this decision to come here. And then, like you said, it's a fantastic, renowned brand. And um, as you can see, I've been, I've been attracted to some of the best brands in the world. It's always struck me that while WBA has had this incredible mission and purpose in healthcare, I know you're putting your stamp on it and you recently updated it to say, create more joyful lives through better health. Can you maybe speak to how uh, this year you've shaped how you think about WBA's role in society? We've been focusing a lot on what matters in terms of how do we inspire the people who work here at WBA? And secondly, how do we engage our customers and our patients in a way that meets them where they are? Understanding that healthcare has typically been addressed in terms of how do you dispense meds, you know, it's all after the effect of diagnosis. What we're trying to really make happen here is to look at the patient and the customer through the lens of preventive, through the lens of well being, and that well being is both physical and mental. And now more than ever, keeping the mental health in check along with the physical health is very important. And a lot of that comes with just understanding what's happening to your body. I just look at what, you know, happened with vaccine administration. Most people didn't understand side effects or no side effects, um, long-term indications versus short-term indications. It's just a, a really clear example of how we need to know our bodies better, how we need to be in control of what happens to ourselves. So we're taking a position on this that um, helps, you know, the patient and customer get engaged very early on taking care of themselves. That's really inspiring, Roz, because it has so much impact on people. But few companies can really say that they serve hundreds of millions of customers uh, like WBA can and have the impact. And you touched on science and you touched on digital. Maybe how do you think about personalizing this entire digital experience for such a vast base of customers? Absolutely. You know, we already have personalized the shopping experience in our stores. And we have a strong physical relationship with our customers and patients. You know, we have these 9,100 stores across the United States. 75% of them are within five miles of every household. So we have the ability to bring a physical experience to you, as well as what we've garnered from a digital perspective. And just imagine if we have your pharmaceutical data, along with all the EMR records that are out there, and then you add a company like Village MD, which we took a, a stronger ownership position in this past October. And you can walk into our buildings, 1,000 of our buildings, and be cared for by primary care physician staff. 
And it would be the same physician every time you walked into the store on 12th and Elm and you see the physician's practice there. And then it's a concierge because that pharmacist and that physician are talking. And that to me is a game changer. Even in retail, I always said, you know, whoever wins in the middle of the physical and the digital is the winner. And we, I feel that same way with healthcare. Coming back to what you've said about digitization, uh, I would say that the last two years we've seen this tremendous acceleration with artificial intelligence and machine learning. And so I, I'm just curious how you envision the future intersection of this healthcare and technology and how WBA becomes also more of a technology company and how you're positioning WBA to get there. Yes, absolutely. So um, we've done quite a bit of work in this space. And, you know, some of the examples are actually what we've done in our loyalty program uh, through our retail and pharmacy business. Um, and now with the new companies that we're adding to our portfolio of companies actually allows us to look at that continuum of care. So imagine, you know, our recent purchase of Shields, uh, which is specialty pharmacy. So managing that part of your life when there is some extreme case, you know, the chronic illness that you're trying to manage. And then think about our position with CareCentrics, which actually handles everything from a home care perspective. So in your life, early or simple diagnosis, getting a prescription filled, seeing one of our physicians in our Village MD units, and then actually having help in a post-acute care situation at the very end of the process, Imagine how all that collective data is brought together and you yourself as a patient or your caregiver has access and they know what your needs are. You know, I, I reflect that in the pandemic in particular, I think what's happened is that a number of regulated industries that perhaps were a little less uh, willing to use technology have certainly embraced it. The government is one. Would you agree with that? And, you know, sort of how has that even changed within the company, uh, you know, the acceptance of technology? Well, you know, here's one of the great outcomes of the pandemic was telehealth. And so for the number of people who couldn't see their physician um, face to face, I would say telehealth became very popular and, uh, and it was easy, right? And so click on the app and your physician pops up. And I think that's a wide, uh, you know, that, that widened that gap in terms of what the capabilities could be in terms of applying healthcare and having conversations and bringing technology to bear in that process. You know, Adobe Summit is all about digitization, and certainly you've touched on that and the impact in the healthcare industry, but it's also about leadership. And I think every one of us uh, has been challenged uh, to lead in different ways. So I'd love to, you know, uh, hear your perspective on leadership and managing through such an uncertain time. I think what I've learned personally about leadership is that we have to make sure that the people who work on our teams feel seen and heard, and that we understand them. And, you know, this is where a little bit of data comes in, right? Because many of us will probably look at aggregate data, right? I have, you know, 40% diverse community in my work, in my stores. Um, I might say, okay, well, then I know how to address a 40-60 plan, right? But now it's it's not about that 4060. It's that person who is Latino, who needs education, who needs housing, who needs all these. It's about that particular person. So, you know, getting more um, intimate and close to who's working in your environment and what are you going to do about it and what their needs are. You can't put people in a bucket. There are no more buckets. And it's about that individual person. And you've got to look them in the face, talk to them about themselves, and then begin to solve problems together. I love that. I mean, you know, diversity and inclusion is something that, you know, is uh, really so important to all of us. Uh, one of the things we like to do, Roz, is uh, just do uh, an end with a word association. So I'm going to try that uh, oh, wow. with you as well. And so I'll just say one word, and you can say, uh, you know, whatever comes to mind. And let's start. Uh, Detroit. My family. Health. Ownership. Vaccines. Life-saving. Walgreens. Fun. <laughs> and I'll end with Ross Brewer. Motivated. Inspired. Well, it was certainly inspiring for me to have this conversation with you, Ross. Thank you again so much for joining us. 
Uh, and thank you, uh, most important, for what you and the entire WBA organization has done uh, to deal with the pandemic and, and put an end to it hopefully soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, my name is Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I have no idea what people, what people might be interested in what I have to say, but I'm excited to be here speaking with Adobe Summit. What do I do? I do a lot of things. I'm uh, Chief Creative Officer at Mountain, one of the founders of Maximum Effort Marketing and Productions. I'm an actor, I'm a philanthropist, I'm a dad, I'm a pal. I guess that about sums it up. <laughs> I am not the world's foremost expert on sarcasm, but I would say that I, I've leaned quite heavily on self-deprecation. I think growing up in Canada, I learned to uh, laugh at myself first and foremost. I think, you know, our ability to laugh at ourselves is, uh, is a serious gift. Let me show you how to make it. I always feel at least a little bit like an outsider in the marketing space and, and the brand space. And, and, you know, sometimes that perspective can be, can be valuable. I'm very good at failing. And from failing, I've really sort of, I think, learned more than I could ever possibly imagine. You could fill a thousand gymnasiums with things I've learned from failing. So as somebody who's, you know, does all right in some other industries, why would I choose to work in, in marketing and advertising? I, I genuinely love marketing. I genuinely love storytelling like that. I love the fact that we can, you know, jump into conversations and, and tell a wide variety of stories. For me and for my company at Maximum Effort, there's more ideas than there are places to tell those stories. So uh, marketing really allows us an opportunity, like a sort of a super highway to kind of get that done. Ads in marketing have so much more in common with film, television, creation and novels, all of those things that I think people give it credit for. Um, it's all storytelling at the end of the day. And for me, like a key tenet in communication and in, certainly in marketing and storytelling is, is this idea that necessity is the mother of invention. And you know that, that is something that I like to bring to everything I do in terms of storytelling. I found like that, that the, the death of creativity usually happens because there's either too much time or too much money or both when your back's against the wall, it forces you to think outside the box and think in more creative ways and how to replace spectacle with character. Just through show business, I've noticed that spectacle certainly only takes you so far. Character is what you remember. Character is what you revisit. Character is what keeps you coming back. But I found that having a personal touch, both on the internet, but also outside of that, access and accountability uh, are two things that have really been massively beneficial and two things, things that I just would never underestimate in terms of how I operate my business and my life. Certainly with the internet, it's, uh, I think it's just about probably 98% listening and then, you know, 2% jumping in the often murky, hot, boiling water of it. You know, engagement is where it's at. You want to engage with, with, with folks and you want to feel like you're listening to them and that hopefully they're listening to you this idea that we create marketing six months in advance or a year in advance and all these kinds of antiquated ideas, you know, to me are, are, are just that. It's, it's really about moving at the speed that people are moving. There's a tremendous amount of red tape in between brands and agencies and creative and, you know, the, the, the sooner and more quickly and efficiently you can close that gap, the sort of the better chance you have at, at really, you know, having a, a conversation piece in the zeitgeist. And for me, the, the, the huge achievements have been the earned media. I mean, working on projects that, you know, come together extremely quickly and, uh, and efficiently and, and, you know, drop into an existing conversation. I do believe that if you, if marketers are able to access in a very real way and drop into a current conversation, then their brand can sometimes become the conversation. And, and that is, you know, the biggest win of all, I think, in that world. We somehow, you know, over the years sort of lost this idea that ads are meant to be fun. You know, ads can be fun. They, and they don't have to be extremely expensive and they don't have to be maudlin. And people know they're being marketed to. Um, so for us, it was a little bit about dropping that artifice and leaning into that idea that, you know, basically, you know, 
tipping our, our, our hand that way, which is you know, saying, yes, we are marketing right now. This is marketing. And when you do that, I think it feels a lot more authentic. And I feel that your consumer and audience are much more likely to share that story and be the authors of whatever that brand's success might be. Because um, people love authorship. And everybody out there is a media company. I mean, everybody has a... Snapchat, a Facebook, a TikTok, a, you know, a Twitter, a Instagram. So they are selective and careful about what they choose to amplify. And if and if you could tell a story that you know doesn't pander to them or condescend, you know, they're they're much more likely to share that story. I, I always kind of lean more on the sort of old school Mad Men aspect of things. I mean, I always look at creative first. You know, I always feel like that's kind of a stopgap and sort of covers all of your bases, regardless of you know your target, so to speak. So. So how do I define success at the end of the day? Um, anything that kind of capitalizes on a conversation, I always find quite successful. I personally find speed very successful. If we can, if we can ideate something and be rolling cameras within 12 to 24 hours, I usually I think that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. I'm not saying that that is how everyone should operate. <laughs> that is those are special circumstances, but uh, where speed counts like that. But um, you know, those are, those are situations that I I feel extremely proud of. The conversations and culture move so fast, you know, it can be really hard to keep up. So we don't we don't typically tell stories that like we're we're sort of planning ahead, you know, three or four months in advance of something. But we do have, you know, set pieces that we think about. Like we did an ad for Match.com, which was um, we'd had sort of cooking for a while. 2020 was just an absolute shit show of a year, and we thought it was very funny if you know Match was you know entering the cultural conversation in a way that was slightly, you know, fresh, which is, you know, Satan is looking to date somebody and finds and meets his perfect match, and that perfect match happens to be the anthropomorphized version of 2020. You know, that, that was a situation where we're thinking sort of much further in advance. It also required a little bit more production value and, you know, prosthetics and all sorts of things that had to happen. But, but everything else is like, sometimes it's just so spur of the moment. Sometimes it just comes from you know, listening. I mean, sometimes it's as simple as Dave Foley, you know, tweeting out, uh, hey, Ryan, I love your ads for Mint Mobile. Can I be in one one day? And then, then us literally just thinking, how fast can we get Dave Foley on camera? It turns out it can be six hours later. So I love being on an airplane because, you know, sometimes I will elect to not activate Wi-Fi, at which point it's, uh, it's when I have all my good ideas. When I'm driving my kids to school in the morning, I have a lot of great ideas when they're not little human power drills in my ear. I, uh, I love that time, I love that time. That time is so precious, like going for a walk without a phone is a beautiful thing to me because that's when inspiration strikes. So it took me a long time to figure that out, I guess because I'm a little bit dumb, but it really took me a while to figure out like, oh, when I sort of like unplug, I'm actually weirdly more sort of productive. When my mind is allowed to kind of wander, I think of stories, I think of like campaigns. I'm oftentimes like, I love the exercise of just throwing any brand up on a whiteboard and sort of seeing what you can come up with. But I think everybody should be taking risks in advertising. I mean, ads and marketing, it's just diet storytelling, you know? It's not something that's meant to be in the Smithsonian. We're just having fun with it. You, you, you swing and you miss sometimes, and other times you swing and you hit a grand slam. It's just, uh, I'm always a huge fan of brands that take huge risks, you know, and think outside the box and do things a little bit differently than the status quo, so. Hello, everybody. I'm Lorenzo Bertelli, CMO for the Prada Group and also Head of CSR. Our group is made by five luxury brands, Prada of course, Mimiu, Churches and Carchou, and also our food and beverage brand that is Marchesio. Our group is present in 70 countries with more than 600 stores. The design of a new group communication strategy has been a priority focusing on our brand's core identity and remaining loyal to our DNA. At the same time, we build an innovative approach to communicate with our audiences based on the constant dialogue powered by digital technologies, putting the customer always at the center. 
The new way of working requires a significant investment in talent acquisition and technology architecture. Adobe continues to be a key strategic tech partner in maximizing the value of the group digital strategy through the use of many tools with Adobe Experience Cloud. Store and store staff are key components for the client journey and are therefore digitally empowered with technology through custom apps directly connecting them to a portfolio of clients. We are seeing extremely positive results from our digital transformation efforts across the business. In 2021, 30% of our sales were influenced by digital-enabled store staff personalized one-to-one -one interaction and experiences. AI-driven recommendations with Adobe Target is resulting in plus 50% product engagement versus not personalized recommendations. We will continue to progress on our digital roadmap, always keeping the customer needs at the center of our strategy because there is no luxury without personalization. I am Gail McGovern, and I have the privilege of serving as the President and CEO of the American Red Cross. For over 140 years, the Red Cross has delivered comfort, care, and hope in the face of disasters and emergencies. Today, we respond to more than 60,000 disasters a year, from a home fire down the street to a wildfire that devastates an entire community. We collect and distribute 40% of our nation's blood supply. And that means that 13,000 people have to show up every day to roll up a sleeve. We train more than 4.6 million people every year in critical safety skills like CPR, first aid, and water safety so that people have tools in order to save a life. Like so many organizations, the Red Cross has faced unprecedented challenges over the last few years. From the pandemic to the extreme increase in the number of natural disasters to frequent urgent needs for blood. And I am so proud of how our Red Cross community joined together to overcome these obstacles and fulfill our mission. One of the very important ways we've been able to do this is by embracing technology and building partnerships with innovative and purpose-driven organizations like Adobe. Together, we've been able to build a digital foundation that allows us to act swiftly and thoughtfully, from gathering data and insights to orchestrating timely, targeted fundraising campaigns, we can create relevant and personalized experiences that support people on their journey from inspiration to action. And as we look to the future, the Red Cross will continue to use technology to be sure that help for those in need comes faster than ever before. Even though these last few years have certainly been a challenge, I still believe I have the best job in the world. It's an incredible privilege for me to be part of our Red Cross mission, and I am so thankful for compassionate partners like Adobe who help us make our critical work possible. Thank you. I joined uh, Real Madrid in 2019 as the Chief Transformation Officer. And part of that mandate was really to help strengthen our relationship with fans, both here in the stadium, but also at home all around the world. I mean, we have over 600 million fans that support the club. We're some of the most passionate fans all around the world. We need to think about that relationship that we have with those fans. It's very hard to have a relationship with 600 million individuals. And that's not only going to be online, it's, it's really in an online, offline environment. It's a really multi-channel, omni-channel kind of approach. But it's going to require bringing new technologies, new approaches, and Adobe's really been with us through that entire journey as one of the, the leaders in customer experience platforms. We're a member-owned organization. We don't have shareholders. We have members that own the club. So they're incredibly, incredibly important stakeholders for us. On top of that, we have our Madridistas loyalty program. So these are fans that are really engaging at an even deeper level. So we have these really rich profiles of people that we want to be able to give the best experience to. 
But of course, we want to know that someone visited us in one of our retail stores or that they visited us on our online store or that they are using our application because that information gives us a better idea of how they want to engage with us and so that gives us the ability to deliver a better experience to them which in turn turns into value for our customers and turns into value for us as a business as well. What we like about the platform is this real-time ability to ingest that data and act on it in real time. So for one of the recent matches for the Champions League, we selected a group of fans and we issued the first ever NFT smart tickets. What it really spoke to was this idea of creating this connected experience across a whole ecosystem. And that's fundamentally what we're looking to the Adobe Experience platform to, to deliver. When that fan arrives at the gate, we scan their ticket stub, we know that that fan has just arrived. What do we want to do? How do we want to make that journey yep. better, more special? Can we surprise and delight them in that moment? So how do we take that data, that event that happened, and make sure that we're personalizing that experience through their app, through the stadium app, through all of the different digital touch points that we have? And that was fundamentally, you know, after quite an extensive research, we came to the conclusion that Adobe's platform was, was really the leader in delivering this type of experience. I'm truly delighted to welcome my friend, John Donahoe, President and CEO of Nike Inc. to Adobe Summit. John has had an incredibly storied and illustrious career, leading incredible brands like ServiceNow, eBay, and Bain through incredible moments of explosive growth as well as transformation. Since joining Nike, he's led the continued growth of the Nike brand as well as Nike Inc's global business portfolio, which includes some amazing brands like Jordan, as well as Converse Inc. John, thank you so much for being here. Thrilled to be here. After all of those great companies, what made you decide to join Nike after a career in technology? Well, it was not something I anticipated doing, Shantan. I had the pleasure of serving on Nike's board, and I was serving and supporting in that way. And then at some point in 2019, Mark Parker, the CEO and Phil Knight, gave me a call and asked me to consider joining Nike. And as I reflected upon it, I'm a, I'm a reasonably purpose-driven person. At no time in my adult life has our world been more polarized. In many ways, sport is one of the few things that still brings people together. You can hate your opponent, but at the end of the game, after you compete, you shake hands. And so as I thought about it, Sport is more important than ever before, and in many ways, Nike is sport. And so I joined Nike because I believe the world needs sport, and therefore the world needs Nike more than ever before. It's incredible because you talk about this emotional connection that sport has, right? But the pandemic has changed uh, how uh, people have viewed sport, and in fact, sport was the one thing that didn't exist for a while. Well, the first thing that happened in the pandemic around sport was something we never anticipated. Because as you said, sports shut down. But what began to happen, you remember, people started working out in their bedrooms, in their living rooms, in their kitchens. I remember watching a grandfather pour soap suds on his kitchen uh, floor and hold on to the kitchen sink and turn it into a treadmill by walking barefoot on a soapy floor. So in many ways, the last couple of years in the most counterintuitive way has celebrated the importance of sport for community, for hope, for inspiration, and for health and wellness. The other thing that happened that really gets to the digital world is the consumer behavior dramatically changed. And so uh, in many ways, changes we thought were gonna take five years happened in two. We had had a strategy called the consumer direct offense. At Nike, you always have a, an offense. And that was all about getting closer to the consumer directly. And when these changes of the consumer happened, we just, we redefined it as Consumer Direct Acceleration, or CDA, because we thought we need to get done in two years what otherwise yeah. would have been done in five. Yeah. Yeah. What role did digital play maybe specifically? You know, one of the themes of this conference is making the digital economy personal. So maybe you can touch upon how empowering people through sport and digital, how did they build on each other? Well, part of our, part of our mission is we bring hope and inspiration. We call it being innovation, and inspiration to every athlete asterisk in the world. That's our core mission. One of the things we did, we made the Nike Train Club and Nike Run Club mobile apps free so that people could use them to work out in their living rooms. Again, that was something that was something we couldn't have done without digital technology, right? With those digital mobile apps. And it was playing a more important 
role in people's lives. The other thing that happened during the pandemic, as you know, is retail closed. Yep. You know, I, I've always talked about how consumers want to get what they want, when they want it, how they want it. Yep. Well, during those pandemic times, that meant buying through mobile apps and otherwise and having an e-commerce experience. As you know, I followed uh, Nike and your journey through Nike. But a couple of things that really struck me was that when the pandemic happened, you emphasized a lot in your conversations with investors and partners and, you know, how digital is going to be a much uh, larger part in the company. You also said it's time to resegment the customers. I remember you're thinking a lot about are they sports or, you know, what are their personas? Maybe just a little on both of those. So digital is not a concept that we were choosing to do. We were looking at the consumer, and the consumer wanted to have a seamless, premium, personalized experience. In fact, they expect that mm -hmm. increasingly. And that forces us to embrace digital, not just in our end user experiences, not just in consumer experiences, but every step through our value chain. So if we're gonna be direct to consumer, our, our warehouses have to be able to not just ship to retailers, but also ship directly to consumers and do it in a close way. Our design, our product creation has to be more digitally enabled so that we can make the product that the consumer wants. And so in many ways, the, the, the consumer insight is what drove the acceleration around our digital transformation. Yeah. Everybody is talking about the metaverse and blending this physical and digital worlds. Will I be able to play better sports in this, uh, you know? Well, he's already laughing, which means the answer is no. But just how do you think about customers in this immersive experience in the metaverse? Well, the first thing I'll say is I think we're in very early days in the metaverse. You know, obviously things like gaming or esports have been around for, for a while. And there's different debates around is that a good or bad thing, right? If it's replacing physical activity mm -hmm. in physical sports, that's not necessarily a good thing. But I think it can augment physical sports. So one of the areas we're very focused on right now is NFTs. You know, there's a whole sneaker community that loves collecting. Nikes, Jordan, Converse sneakers, right? And they have closets full of them. And it's a sort of a, a badge of honor and a validation in a community to have certain yep. sets of shoes. And what's happened a little bit is prices have been bid up for many of those shoes. And so some of the core original sneaker collectors no longer can afford these lofty prices. Yep. Take something like an NFT, however, if we make an NFT for every sneaker, every Jordan or every Nike, or we make certain collections, and the ability to trade and, and build community around them will grow. And so the Adobe platform, as you know, has played such an important role of allowing us to take really important steps towards to delivering a more personalized experience for our consumers. And our marketing teams, our, our data teams are just thrilled by the platform. As you know, you're also helping with our product designers and our product creators right, automating and helping to enable so much of what they do. And that's the core, that core innovation, that core differentiation of Nike is that incredible product design. Talk a little bit about leadership in this pandemic. And you know, what are the leaders expected to do? There's social issues, there's technology issues, there's, uh, you know, so much that's going on competitive. Just a couple of words of wisdom for the audience. Two words that come to mind for the for leaders in this environment is authenticity and vulnerability. Having authenticity to be with your team. And mm -hmm. I think this is leaders throughout all the organization, not just a CEO at all levels. And then vulnerability. That is the further along I get in my life, the more I realize the importance of the role of vulnerability. Because vulnerability creates connection and therefore creates followership. And so I think, I think it's just been an incredible lesson about the importance of authenticity and vulnerability. I think that's great. It's been, as always, a pleasure, John. I really appreciate uh, your being here with us at Adobe Summit. Thank you so much for being here and always great to have you. Great, Shantanu, thank you. Thank you, Shantanu and John. With that, we're about to wrap up this keynote. There's a lot to digest. And again, we've just scratched the surface. Over the course of Summit, you'll hear from some incredibly inspirational and thought-provoking luminaries across industries. And a reminder to dive into the innovation super sessions to go deeper into the key areas of data and insights, content, commerce, B2C and B2B customer journeys, 
and marketing workflows. There are also over 200 breakout sessions and training workshops available across 10 tracks. Finally, we're not forgotten about Sneaks. The talented and witty Kristen Bell will be our host. And alongside a group of Adobe experts, we'll share a fun peek into the future of digital experience by our research projects in our labs. Okay, on behalf of our entire team at Adobe, I want to thank you for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of Summit.